So I'm driving my car the other night, and what do you think happens? I crashed into a utility pole. Then, to add insult to injury, I was electrocuted. What can I say? It was one of those days. All my neighbors heard it happen, so they quickly left their microwaved burritos and their expensive jars of moisturizer and their racy pay-per-view movies. And they hurried outside, excited to see what all the ruckus was about. But then, when they saw it was me, this weird thing happened. For a moment, no one moved or said anything. They just stared. And then... Oh, my God. All hell broke loose. Does anybody know CPR? There's been an accident. Edie. Can you hear me? Yes. Everyone suddenly became very concerned, which was touching, but ultimately pointless. Moments before the ambulance finally arrived, I heard someone whisper, Don't worry, Edie. You're going to get through this. You're going to be just fine. Oh, Susan Meyer, wrong again. Two seconds later, it happened. With all my neighbors surrounding me, I took my last breath. The good news? I died just like I lived as the complete and utter center of attention. This was a wonderful idea, Karen. Wasn't exactly mine. Now be careful, you're spilling E.D. Urn is empty. Let's do it. Shouldn't we say something first? Like what? I don't know. A few words describing how we felt about her? I don't think E.D. would want us to get all sappy. Well, I think if we're quick about it, she'd be fine. Mm. Here's a thought. We all say one word that sums up what we thought of her. And then, then we dump her. And then we dump her. Just one word. This is hard. Mm. Okay, I got one. I'll go first. Edie Britt was sexy. Mm. Perceptive. Strong. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I need four words. All right. Okay, I want to do Edie justice, and for that to happen, I need four words, okay? Edie would so not be surprised you're ruining this moment. <clears throat> Go ahead, Susan. What are your four words for Edie? One of a kind. <laughs> now, it's time. And that is how Wisteria Lane came to be my final resting place. My ashes were spread over grass I had once walked on. Beneath trees that had once given me shade. On top of roses I once admired. And beside fences I once gossiped over. And after my friends had finished saying goodbye, a wind came along and took what was left of me into the air. As I looked down on the world, I began to let go of it. I let go of white picket fences and cars and driveways, coffee cups and vacuum cleaners. I let go of all those things which seemed so ordinary, but when you put them together, they make up a life. A life that really was one of a kind. I'll tell you something. It's not hard to die when you know you have lived. And I did. Oh, how I lived.